Right. How did they get it so wrong? I think there are two big data failures in this election. Let's just take them one at a time. First of all, the And by polling. the way, you were on the show last week saying that there was you felt there was a good yeah. chance of a Brexit light outcome, uh, meaning I that did. You felt there was a good chance the polls were wrong. I don't want to be here, sitting here, that, saying that being the person that says I told you so, but we did discuss did. that. I think there are two, <laughs> there are two types of, of, of big failure on the on the data front in this election. First of all, in the polling, um, the polling models basically missed two big groups of voters. One was the secret Trump voters. Those could be people who basically were going to support Trump, but in response to the moral shaming that was going on by many on the other side saying, if you support Trump, you're a bigot and a racist and a xenophobe, they basically didn't want to admit it. And then the second type of voter that they missed were those who actually were invisible previously because they had not participated in politics because they didn't believe that any vote they made would make a difference. And so there were, there were the new Trump voters who voted for the first time believing he was a different kind of leader that might shake things up. But the other big failure is in the turnout. And this was the real heart, I think, of what went wrong with the Clinton campaign, which is that they had this incredibly sophisticated data-driven machine built to turn out the vote in, in very, very uh, specific ways in specific places. But it turns out that if you don't have a message and a leader that people really believe in, all the sophisticated data in the world won't get you the result that you want. Steve, uh, do you think that some of those voters were on Reddit? <laughs> I'm sure they were on Reddit. <laughs> And I, I think while clearly there's methodology issues with the polls that were done, um, if you spent any time on Reddit in the last year, last night's results weren't entirely surprising. We have a lot of um, users that support both candidates, but the users for Donald Trump or the Donald Trump supporters on Reddit were very much more engaged than other users on our site. Um, we saw on average um, users, or Donald Trump supporters vote six times more often on Reddit than supporters of other candidates. Mm. So that engagement, I'm sure, translated directly to turnout and to the results last night. Okay. If the product's broken, marketing can't fix it. So the Democrats have a superior marketing machine, but the product wasn't as good. Mm. Steve Hilton, how do they make sure this doesn't happen again? By they, you <laughs> For the next four the years, had, exactly. I, I, I honestly I mean, don't, I don't know. Almost, was but it, it's interesting because almost every election you see this going on now with the polls saying, oh, they got it wrong this way, they, they got it wrong that way. I think that for the, for the reasons that you give, the, the way people are engaging now with each other in society, they're much more fluid in their views. I just wonder whether the whole thing is actually out of date. Um, mm -hmm. One thing I would say is that there is a way of looking at the failure of the, mach the marketing machine in a positive way, not necessarily in terms of the outcome. I'm not making a judgment about that. But if we do go to a world where actually it's not just about grinding out the vote through incredibly sophisticated targeting and a sort of soulless mechanistic approach, that it actually forces candidates to really inspire people and to develop a, a plan that people really can believe in. Mm -hmm. And they're not just reliant on these, these uh, data-driven techniques. That might lead to a more healthier political system all around.